Welcome to AHR Expo here in Las Vegas. And you guys know I love building science and not just the HVAC system, but the whole house. And I have met Ken, and I really wasn't expecting what I was gonna find when I got to first talk to Ken. Ken, what is it that you do? Tell us about yourself, tell us about what you love. Okay, so I love building science. I've got a passion for it. Um, background was actually working with a spray foam manufacturer and then uh, met IDI. Insulation distributors, they're, they're kind of different in that their business has been built really by training their contractors to be better. And that's kind of the subject we got on. So oddly enough, they gave me a very large leash or rope, however you want to look <laughs> at it, to go out and train contractors and train people coming into the trades and into business on building science, on better buildings, on what insulation can and can't do and things like that. And so we started out as one of the largest sellers of spray foam in North America, really training people how not to mess up a building and how to really get it right. You know, you're manufacturing in someone's house. It wouldn't matter what I manufactured in your house if I made, you know, fiberglass or mineral in your house. It'd be a while before you move back in, you know, that kind of thing. So foam, you're doing live manufacturing in a house, but also now you're air sealing it. Well, that creates other issues. But a couple of things, when you think of where it gets used, one is when we look at attics and we put a lot of, a lot of ductwork into attics in the south. Unfortunately, well, in yeah. my opinion. Well, and where we do that, I loved, Allison Bales made the best statement I've ever heard about that. We're making ice cream in an oven. That's exactly Which, right. the attics in Texas are 170 degrees, and what are we trying to do in them? Make ice cream. You know, we put the ductwork up there. But when houses leak, people get uncomfortable because they've got uneven temperature rooms, they've got more dust, you know, right. more air infiltration, more building degradation. So what we're teaching a lot of contractors anymore, you don't have to have foam to do it. There's tapes, there's different, you know, foam on the outside of a building. There's all kinds of ways today I can build a building without using spray foam, and I'm going to get it down in air changes. And just so that we cover what air changes are. If I took all the air out of the convention center and paid to cool it off again, that's one. Okay, yep. So some houses have over 20 air changes an hour, meaning 500 times a day. They're paying to condition air, and then it's going out. Yeah, pretty crazy, isn't it? So when we air seal these, then we have other things that go on. Now we'll have less dust. We'll have more even temperature rooms. Energy isn't just leaving. I asked you before, had you ever been skiing? And you know, if you think of skiing, if we jump on a hill, and I give you a seven inch thick cotton sweater. Sounds great, lots of insulation, right? Seven yeah. inches thick, great. You're at R35. Bottom of the first hill, you're an R35 popsicle. Sorry, we just killed you. <laughs> you know, but if I'd have given you a layer of Gore-Tex, just one, no R value, bottom of the first hill, that energy you're making couldn't get out, you'd start to sweat. Well, when we think of a building, all we've gotta do is make it where the energy can't get out. Now we can control the air, we can condition the air, we can make people healthier. Everything comes together. So if you want less dust, better indoor air quality, more even temperatured rooms, the first thing you do is control the, the building envelope. It's kind of like if you brought me your car and you said, hey, my heater core isn't working because, you know, we got a winter front coming through. <laughs> and you said, my heater core isn't working. I'd say, well, you know, the problem we got, Ty, is your window's down. <laughs> why don't we put your window up and I'll bet the heater core works great. And that's why we're here at the AHR simply for one reason. We thought about it years ago and realized that HVAC contractors are talking to people that often blame their mechanical equipment right. for their lack of comfort. When the mechanical equipment's working beautifully. And so what you've got to do is look at the building envelope. We've got to, if there's a window open, meaning, you know, if there's a hole that big in the house, which right. there always is, always, we've got to close that so that we can finally control the air. And now the mechanical equipment will work the way it's supposed to. Well, because they're blaming their equipment, that person's already there. These people aren't calling an insulator with their problem. They're calling an HVAC company. That's right. So HVAC companies, the one thing I love, and I've talked to them about it for years, is they test everything. And to me, if you're not testing, you're, you're guessing. guessing. It's exactly right. <laughs> I gave them shirts five years ago at one of our first trainings that said that. And everybody just looked at me kind of funny. And I'm like, hey, if you can't measure it, I don't believe it. That one Dr. Joe Stebrick told me. But anyway, <laughs> you know, it's just, it's such a fun industry because the public is starting to learn this. 
And so what we do, we, you know, obviously we sell the spray foam, we sell the fiberglass, we sell all insulations and air sealing products, but really we train contractors. We've got about 30 trainings this year on crawl spaces. And you think about crawl spaces, I'll show you something. This is poly. Now this came out of a house and this is when you lay plastic on the bottom of your crawl space. It always does. Recycled plastic, just think of it as already on the way to the grave. It died once. It's not going to live very long the second time. I never thought of that. Yeah. So polys, and we sell a lot of them. I, I got to watch what I say, you know, but, <laughs> but we sell a lot of poly to go where people line crawl spaces and things like that. But this is falling apart as soon as you get it. Well, let's take a, you know, a water bottle. Okay, this, if I throw this outside in the sun, you know, a milk bottle wouldn't last a year out in the sun, but it's recycled plastic. If I throw this outside in the sun, it's not going to break down. So 10 years from now, it's probably going to look like this. Now, this is a virgin polyester. So I want to show you something. I've got a strand here. This is one strand of the Viper liner that, you know, this is what we're showing them this time around. Usually we're showing them insulation. So my dog and pony show this time. Take that and try and break it, Ty. Don't cut your fingers. Just try to break it. Okay, well this doesn't seem right. I'm really stronger than this. Like that is no, it's one not breaking. strand of this wow. barrier. That's and actually if I cool. grab a sheet out of it, I'll show you what we've been showing them this week. Hmm. This is gonna actually be lighter than the plastic, but that where the poly that I showed you. It'll have about 240 grams of puncture resistance. Wow. This is going to have 8,800 grams of puncture resistance. You cannot tear it. You can't break it. And it blocks radon gas. It blocks all soil gas. That's awesome. So when you think of a crawl space, there's quite a few people. If you look it up online, there's a couple of doctors that said vented crawl spaces should be illegal. And the reason why, if I'm living in my house, remember, heat rises. So if the heat's rising, where's all the air I'm breathing coming from from below from the crawl space so now you know you ask somebody give me three words to describe your crawl space it's usually moldy musty scary that's the air you're breathing yeah so what we're telling them is line the crawl space dehumidify it absolutely and now you're controlling the building so i'm a big fan of seal the top seal the bottom and walk away Love and it. i'm telling you with all of the homes that we've built over the years and all the things we didn't know with what we know now there is more than enough work for everyone out there. That. And God bless every contractor that gets into this space and starts fixing buildings and making people healthier. That's awesome. You know, people, their biggest investment is their house. They spend all this money, their whole entire, the biggest thing they ever buy is going to be their home. Doesn't come with an owner's manual. Doesn't come with an owner's manual. And then people think about their air, they think about their cabinets, they think about their couch. But you know, the house, the healthiness of the people, but also the home itself, having this infiltration coming through, their biggest investment is being unprotected and they think it's just the air conditioner. And all you guys, when you're thinking about careers, think about the whole house system. We could spend all the money in the world designing the best bilge pump ever designed, ever built. But at some point in time, we have to think, maybe we should stop the water from coming into the boat. And that applies also to houses, to homes. And there is endless amounts of stuff with this building science. And I love, this is my passion, I love the building science. I'm not a professional, I'm not the top in it, but I love this stuff. And we should all be thinking about the building science, about the whole house system. I am so glad you brought up careers. Anyone out there, guys, look up Jessica the Attic Queen. This is a young lady that during the lockdown, during COVID, couldn't go to the gym, loved to vacuum, started vacuuming out, you know, the bad insulation in the top of a house. She is now a rock star on Instagram, booked solid for months. If you're young and you want to get into this trade, there's so many places you can get into this trade. You're absolutely right. Ty. Nothing is as cool as building science. I've done a lot of things in life and chemistry and all of that. And I, I'm telling you, once I got into this and I learned building science and I learned the difference we can make, it changed my life. My house in Arlington, Texas, it's on soil that makes the house break apart. Oh, wow. So when we tested it, it was 23 air changes an hour. My January bill when we bought the house, and I promised my wife I could fix it, but my January bill in 2014 was $1,109 because there was no gas to the property. It was only electric. It was 250 amp furnaces up in the attic going wild, having a party. All we did was seal off the attic. I didn't change the windows. I didn't change everything else. 
we sealed off the attic, moved that, you know, ice cream maker into conditioned space so it wasn't in an oven anymore. And now my January bill was 156. Here's wow. the point. If you look at what Recurve says with the federal government, Recurve says if we can cut household fuel consumption by 25%, that's equivalent to taking half of all passenger cars off the road. Wow. I cut mine by 80, guys. Wow. By 80. What's, what's that taking off the road? This trade has room for so many. I'm not getting in attics anymore. I'm, I'm on the downside, we'll say, of the hill. <laughs> But there is so much room in the trades for you guys, and there's so much money in it. I know I shouldn't go to that, but the financial rewards, the life rewards, and I'm telling you, if you're bored behind a computer, if you're falling asleep, if you're doing something that doesn't reward you, when you're fixing buildings, you feel great at the end of every single day, and people appreciate what you did. I am so glad you brought that part up. And you know, I don't have all the videos. We still have so much to learn about. How could somebody learn more about building science right now? The funny thing is, our classes are essentially free. It's, it's not just me doing free stuff, somebody else does it too. <laughs> here's the deal. It's $150 to reserve a seat. Okay. And what we do is when you attend, we actually credit the money back to you, or we credit to an account where you can buy masks, gloves, tape, fiberglass, we don't care. But we do it because we want to train the industry to be better, to understand this, and how to make money, how to start a business, how to get into this, or how to go work for someone, or how to change their business and make it better. Awesome. And so there's that. There's the Building Science Fight Club on Instagram. That's Dr. Joe's daughter, who's kind of his legacy. And Christine, God bless her, she does phenomenal work in building science. So many young people are starting to get into this, and I just feel blessed because of it. But you start learning. Go to buildingscience.com. Type in a question. This is going wrong with my building. Up's going to pop all the information. One of the things we all love about Dr. Joe Stebrick is all of the things they fixed over the years, the studies they did and what they paid for, they put online for free. Wow. So if I've got a problem with a building, I go to buildingscience.com. I click on search all documents. I write in what I'm looking for, and up pops just white paper after white paper, project after project, and wow. tremendous information. Most of us that do this, do it because we love it. I do, I do love this. I'm this is so awesome. I'm so glad you came by. We could talk about this for, for months. Like this is stuff we love to talk about. But you guys wanna know more about it? Learn that information's out there. You can find all these great people. We're gonna put some resources and link below so you can get started with that and look into it and see if this is what you wanna do. But even if it's not what you want to do, you need to be thinking about the whole building side, not just HVAC, the whole building part of it. Very important. Ken, thank you so much for your thank time. Thank you this very is much, Ty. This is awesome. Thank you.